of the king's prison. They put him right where he needed to be for the baker and the cupbearer to be thrown in that prison for him to be there. You see where I'm going with this? He had to be there to be able to interpret their dreams. He had to be there. And if he never walked through the journey that he took, he wouldn't have been in the position at the place to be set out there. Oh. And when the dreams come true that he had told Joseph. Woo! Hallelujah. And the old baker, he was hung three days, and the cup there, he was sent back to the king's house. And what did Joseph tell him? Oh, don't forget me. Don't forget me. But he did. Joseph was in there three more years. You know, Joseph probably thought, God, oh, Lord, here I am in this jail. I know I have favor here. God, but Lord Jesus, I know my destiny, my purpose is more than to set in this jail. God, Oh, dear Lord, Father, I ask you, God, to move and help me, Lord. But see, all the time God was molding and making Joseph so he would be in the place and the maturity that he could follow after the will of the Father. After the will of the Father. Jesus, it says in the Word that he loved, that he uh, learned obedience to the things he suffered. We are no better than our Master. We learn obedience. It's for our motive. It's for our making. We're children of light, not children of darkness. He tells us before that we're going to go through these things. Why? Because it's a motive and make us. It's a mold us and make us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I tell you, when it comes time for the king to have his dreams, and he had them dreams of seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, he called for all his old divine come and try to interpret that dream. But I tell you what, there was one already planted that could interpret the dream. Not by his flesh, but by the Spirit of God. And when the cupbearer remembered, oh chosen, he told the king, he said, these, they can't tell you what it's about, but I know one that interpreted a dream that I had, and it come to pass. I'm telling you about that man, and when Joseph was clean, and when he cleaned himself and made himself ready to go before the king, Oh, I tell you what, he was positioned and placed then, and he was put second to the king. Hallelujah. Yes, he was. He was put second to the king. Anything he decided in that kingdom was under his authority. And I want to give you another nugget here. Oh, once Joseph entered into that position, oh, when he walked into that place, of preparing the grain for the children of the earth and for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I just hope you can grasp what I'm trying to bring forth here. Hallelujah. They said, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried it. What is the word he's talking about? The dream that he had seen back when he was a child. That, oh, that the sheaves were bowed and down to his sheaves and and all these things that would take place. Oh, I tell you what, that was the word that had to come forth. But until that word come forth, the word of the Lord had to mature. Joseph had to carry him through a fashioning and a molding so he would be able, able to carry out the will of God. Able. That's what God is doing in us. We're facing some of the most difficult times. Oh, but I'm telling you, you serve a God. I don't care if you're in the midst of a jail. You've got the Word in you. And you can have church right there in your heart with God. Right there with God. Right there. <laughs> know in whom you possess today. Know in whom you serve. And you know once he was put in that authority, he never lost it. The rest of his life, he walked in that authority. Do you realize I, what I just dropped here? When God brings you to your destiny and to your purpose that you were born and put up on this earth for, 
Hallelujah. If you'll just let him mold and make you, when he delivers you up out of that thing, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Not out of some of them, but out of them all. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he never put more on us than what we can bear. Never more on us than what we can bear. Hallelujah. And I tell you what. <laughs> oh, that's powerful to me. That's powerful to me. And I said, God, when you, if you said you'd never put more on us than what we can bear, you'd make a way of escape. He's already made provisions. Already made provisions for us. But until we receive it by faith and believe it and grab a hold of it, then we can't reach it. But we reach this thing and unlock it by faith. By faith. By faith. Oh, the Lord told us, draw now unto me and I'll draw nigh to you. Oh, if you'll knock it, I'll answer. Oh, oh, it's time. Oh, that we call a solemn assembly. It's time that we get back to prayer like we never have before. It's time. You know, he told us that he would not bring us to travail and not give us the strength to bear forth, the birth forth. So if we will let him enter us into travail, he will give us the strength to birth forth this. To birth it forth. Oh, I tell you, I don't care. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs, the righteous are bold as a lion. But the wicked, they run it for the hill at any least little thing. <laughs> so you don't shake. You don't tremble before the devil. You look him straight in the eye. In the anointing of God. Under the authority of his word. And you put him to flight. The Bible says if we resist him, he has to flee. Has to flee. You know, we are warriors that God has called forth. Do you think that he would call us forth as warriors and not give us weapons for this warfare? That he wouldn't put us through the boot camp to train us? You know, I saw a vision around the summer. I think it was around June. And I saw this sword suspended in the air. And it just had the glow of God all around it. It was a roll type sword. The Lord spoke to me and he said, he said, this is standing for my word, you know, in Ephesians, where it talks about the spirit of the Lord and about the, it is the word of God in the armor of God. It is the word of God. And he told me, he said, my ministers, a lot of times they have gone forth and preached my word, but they haven't had it in position in their life and the ability to expound it forth skillfully. But he said, I'm going to put in my ministers the ability to put forth my word skillfully that will raise my people up and empower them. It will empower them. God is empowering his people. The ones that will hear the call. You know, I saw a vision. Hallelujah. Of this woman clothed in white. She was laid across the altar. It's about this wide. And there was a horn on each side. And she had to grab a hold of the horn. And she was travailing. And she was just in deep travail, crying out. Just travailing and travailing. And I looked up the head of her, above her. And I saw this rock. And then it just started gushing forth water. And it fell upon the woman. And the Lord, he told me, he said, my pride. He said, if they'll fall across the altar. And they'll grab hold of the horns of the altar. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon them. And he said, they will arise in my power. Or of the behind. Not in their flesh, but in God's power. This thing is not done by power, my, but by the Spirit of the Lord. But by His Spirit, says the Lord. Oh, I said, God, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father. Help us, God. God, put that spirit of travail in our spirits. 